this will be probably about 10 minutes or so. Um, in the morning, right when you wake up or as you're getting ready to go to bed at, at night, um, I'm just gonna use my bed here. So uh, coming to the bed, I'm gonna bring my tailbone kind of in line, getting my legs up. Okay, and then lowering gently to the floor. Even in the lowering the floor, my chin is down just so I can get into position. Okay. And then from here, okay, opening the arms wide, palms up, or reaching the arms behind and away, sometimes just resting the hands right on the chest. And as you settle in, feeling the floor and feeling the shape of the body and then just taking a few minutes to tune in. So mind to the tailbone, tailbone dripping towards the ground. And a lot of these visuals, um, obviously a bone is not going to drip, but what is attached to the bone. Okay, so these sensations that we try to elicit come from removing accumulation. Then okay. travel the mind to the belly button. Feel the belly button moving as you breathe and even play with moving the belly button. Reach it up towards your chin. See if you can go down towards your knees, side to side. Try to make circles with your belly button, other way. When you breathe in, breathe in and sink the belly button to the ground. When you breathe out, gently pause to feel the belly button position downward. So it's a slightly different movement. Instead of inflating on the inhale, you're actually inflating inward. Notice if you find more movement coming up into the rib cage when you breathe this way. Notice if you get more feedback on the sides. And in particular, when you breathe in and drawing the belly button down, can you use the floor and feel the muscles of the back expanding on the inhale? And then take the mind right up to the low part of the rib cage and try to go inside the ribs and notice expansion and contraction of the breath. What needs to move to take the air in? what needs to move to get the air out. Then let the mind drift up to the shoulder blades. Now with the shoulders, if you start wiggling them just gently okay, and feel the connections on the back, take your mind and try to go right behind where the heart and lungs are, right? You can put your hand on your, that's where your heart is. And when you breathe in, think of scooping into the floor and away. And when you breathe out, almost like a blanket gently draping down onto a tabletop after a breeze passes through it. The inhale is expansion through the back body. And then the exhale is a soft opening up. Then take the attention to the neck without doing anything. Just notice how your neck feels, how your head feels placed on the ground. Then take the tip of the tongue and lift it up behind the top teeth and just notice any release through the jawline. Imagine there's a string at the crown of your head gently being tugged away from the chest and notice if 
as you adjust those little things, the little string at the crown of the head, the tip of the tongue behind the top teeth, can you make the back of the neck extend longer on the ground? And then the chin may, you may feel the chin gently drop down. Keep the tip of the tongue behind the top teeth. And as you breathe, can the belly button on the inhale drop down to the ground as the back muscles expand into the floor? And then on the exhale, can everything in the body just gently feel that dynamic action? Let's say you feel nothing at all, nothing. Uh, that is data worthy because the vocabulary to feel the subtle body has to be practiced in order to learn new sensations. Eyes closed, look up to the forehead. Imagine that the space between the eyebrows are opening wide. and count 10 deep breaths from here. One breath at a time. See each one, count each one. After the 10 breaths are complete, undoing this posture, start taking the legs off the bed and just bend the knees and just start kneading the toes. Hug the knees to the chest when you're ready and gently rock side to side. And then take a side that naturally you can roll to and begin to let yourself sit up slowly. And then as you sit up, then just naturally stretch out the body, whatever feels good. And you may notice some sensation, you know, some sensations here. There may be a feeling of lightheadedness. Um, there may be a feeling of openness. There may be a feeling of heaviness. Okay, so you just want to notice what you feel. And then coming into a tall sit, same cues, same things with the mind, only now integrating into the muscle body, holding the spine now upward, perpendicular to the ground. Tailbone drips downward. Noticing the belly button and when you breathe in, gently draw the belly button towards the back. And then when you breathe out, notice any uh, expansion created in the back muscles. Let the mind float inside the rib cage and watch and feel what moves to allow the lungs to fill with air. And then what moves when the lungs release the air from the body. Noticing the intersection point between the neck and the shoulders and that string at the crown of the head gently starts lifting up. Tip of tongue floats up behind the top teeth. Space between the eyebrows open wide. And then 10 breaths here. When you breathe in, can the belly button draw into the spine? Can the muscles on the back expand? Can there be an upward flow and a downward drip? On the exhale, bring all the movement inward. Noticing the expansion made. And if none of this works, fuck it, you're still breathing. And every time we try to consciously breathe and move muscles, 
the machine of the body becomes more resilient within the autonomic nervous system. So frustration or even joy in trying to do this kind of doesn't matter. Ultimately, it's being done. What does matter is the intention. Okay. So if your mind is going, oh, I can't do this, I'm, yeah, right? That's the cycle that you're repeating. So if you were going to make a salad and you just kept throwing in salt, at some point, there's just too much salt in the recipe. So if the mind is saying, oh, I'm trying this, cool, I'm doing this, that is the enhancement that goes into the recipe. And then we'll try 333 breaths of fire, which is gonna kick it the other way. Okay, so breath of fire is going to be very vigorous breath. Um, I challenge you to notice what you're thinking about trying to do. Bakista breath, bellows breath. Okay, so number one, the belly is trying to pump and just try to pump the belly as you breathe. Okay, number two, you're trying to sit tall. Number three, holding the posture of the arms steady. Are my fingers holding? Are my thumbs pressing down? Are my arms in an extended wingspan? Can I lift up? Can you do this breath as you get in the rigor of it? Can you keep your face relaxed? Okay, so these are just a few of the elements that you try to work with. And ultimately, it's enough to pay attention to that most thinking kind of moves out of the picture, even for just a few minutes. And then it becomes, how do I breathe like this? So excellent for the lung capacity, amazing, amazing in reducing and releasing angst. Okay, so 333 of these, and you just go for it. You do what you can do. And please keep a very good sense of humor as you go.
complete relief. Ah. What were you thinking while you were doing that? What were you feeling while you were breathing that way? And now it's done. And notice the sensations you feel through the body. Now, if you're an athlete, right, you may use this and then go out and move the yang, right, action. If you are not an athlete, this may have been your yang. And so the balance of the yin and the yang, the stillness power, right? and then the more action power, and then they both come together in balance. So to close practice, if you were to think of the balance of the energies, right? left side in yoga is often considered the yin, the right, the yang, kind of doesn't matter in my humble opinion, but by putting the palms together face up and feeling that. And then noticing, did I breathe deeply? And then the gratitude of the ability to breathe deeply and using that ability and that power and that gratitude to share with everything you encounter in your day. Thanks so much for practicing and keep trying the breathing. Um, it's really phenomenal. And I think part of the effort and playing with it and just knowing what breath patterns work for you um, is really the magic of all this. So as my teacher would say, the reason why you watch your breath, it's the one thing you have 24 hours a day. So thank you again and breathe well, breathe deeply. Take care.